five years. And the Red Wing players wear the cut to uh, commemorate the loss of their teammate on the team off. They're supposed to be in town and coming to the game Sunday. What an emotional moment that will be. Two nothing, Red Wing. Power play, Red Wing. Good penalty, 35 seconds. Stars can only hope to hang on here and take just a 2 nothing deficit with them. And the Red Wings have the man advantage in Shanahan. In behind the goal, leaves it. Red Wings flip it out in front of the net. Mariano, but he lost it and left it in, brought it back down the ice and a weak shot in wide of the goal. Now stop it. Red Wings will bring it out. Decided to turn back. Penalty is over now. Red Wings get in anyway. The point took the shot from the shot angle. 140 left in the period. Now, right is back. Two rounds. Stop. Gallup. Minute and a half left in the period. Dumping it in was Grant Marshall. Multi. Way for Gulland. Down to the corner. Knew the hit was coming, took it anyway, got the puck out. Woo! Chambers has pumped near center right. Marshall turning back. Doesn't get very far. Red Wing Scraper stepping in. Hard shot blocked by Belfour. First of three by Draper. And now a minute left in the first period. Draper is offside. He just kept striding away. Might have waited. But he was across center ice taking the pass. And that's offside. Well, it's a tough period when you're down with four power plays and one of them a long double, and they're down 2 nothing. Detroit has scored on one of the two outman situations they've enjoyed here in the first period. Detroit has been much more abrasive tonight, and we've noticed no physical advantage like we saw Dallas have in game two. And the more opportunistic Red Wings game like this, that will be tough to handle for Dallas. Seven to six are the chances. Dallas ahead. If they had all kinds of power plays. Eleven to seven are the shots. Dallas ahead. They're ahead in those two departments. But the Red Wings have two goals. Two nothing. Fifty seconds left in the period. Dallas will quit. Old is coming on with Langenberger. He gets too much done in front of the net. Osgood called the long net to cut the shot and stopped it easily. Eiserman, backhand cut off the board, back to the center. 30 seconds left. Right to back to the zone zone for the Red Wings. This is Gilson taking the pass. He got the first goal offside this by the McCarty. Down the wing, ahead of him, 19 seconds left in the period. of the final four still alive for the Stanley Cup has loaded rosters as far as playoff experience is concerned. And you can see Detroit has an edge there, but uh, there's no lack of people who know what the playoffs are all about and know the secret, if there is one, to the Stanley Cup. Face off again, won by Gauss and Chambers. Tried to threat a pass through the middle, didn't work. Protecting better. In front of that pass is Conclaw. Red Wings rolling around between the two blue lines. In control as the horn goes to end the period. Well, the Dallas Stars are forced to open up whether they like to play that way or not. And the Detroit Red Wings can be awful difficult to play against if you gamble very much. Shots 11 to 7 Dallas. Gilchrist and Goodson go for the goal scorers in the game. In this team, the Detroit Red Wings in this game three have taken a 2 nothing lead. Here's something you should never do with your eyeglasses unless they're made from Flexon. Even after bending and twisting, Wings have a 2 nothing lead over the Dallas Stars after 20 minutes of play. Of course, as you know, the 1997 Detroit Red Wings won the Stanley Cup. Vladimir Konstantinov was a defenseman who led them during that time. Seven days after the Cup, there was a car accident, and now Vladimir Konstantinov is putting his life back together. 
Scott Oak traveled to Florida to speak with the Konstantinovs, Vladimir and Irina. Vladimir, it's uh, very good to see you. How are you doing? Irina, when you left Detroit in November, what were you hoping the move to Florida would do for Vladimir's rehabilitation? Um, we were hoping for the better weather, which is very important for rehabilitation process. He can be molten outside by the swimming pool, and, and generally, people are not as depressed, especially people uh, who are sick or in a condition like his. And uh, that's absolutely true. I found out for myself that uh, it actually makes him happier, uh, you know, being outside, have a sunny weather, as well as uh, my daughter likes it here too. So the, it's been a pretty wonderful winter for us. Have you seen the progress you hoped for then? Uh, absolutely. Um, I think we were, we were very fortunate that we take that rehabilitation hospital with the the whole winter. Um, therapists and doctors were very, very great and um, very caring with Vladi. Um, it was a lot of progress, definitely. Vladimir is very much on the minds of his uh, Red Wing teammates. Uh, his locker remains untouched at the Joe Lewis Arena and the players speak of him often. Um, how much support do you draw from that? Um, tremendous support, I think. That's absolutely wonderful um such respect when the teammates are actually keeping his spot in the locker room the first time we saw it we had tears in our eyes so it's really really um gives us great feeling and uh the players um constantly in touch with us they call and um some of them when they have time visited us few times um we feel that wonderful support from the Red Wing organization uh, and the Illichus family. Um, without their help, a lot of things would be really, really hard on us nowadays. But uh, they, they pretty much do anything Vladimir needs. Six months ago, uh, as you said, uh, Vladimir wasn't speaking, and he is now. Uh, but six months ago you said you were just beginning to communicate. How do you communicate now as a family? Um, mostly, we have no problem communicating with him. Vladi is uh, very much willing to communicate, let you know, us know what he needs. Uh, mostly he speaks Russian, which makes it difficult for nurses to work with him and the therapist. But um, he is so willing to do a lot of work and participating in, during the therapist that really nobody has problems. What's the single biggest thing that you've seen in his rehabilitation that's been a source of inspiration for you? Um, well, I think that's the fact when I talk to him about how he's trying to dare him to get upset if he's not there with the guy. He says, I'll be back next month uh, in town and I'll start practice soon. He is absolutely sure that he will do it. And you know what? I'm supporting him. <laughs> I think it's great. And uh, we really waiting uh, right now to get back home and uh, as a matter of fact to get to the locker room so he can have that feeling back. Is that one of the first stops you'll make when you get back to Detroit? Absolutely. Uh, clearly he has made progress. Are you left to conclude that if he keeps progressing at his current rate that uh, he will make the recovery that you dream of? Um, I don't know what to say. You know what? I wish. Thank you very much. Thank you. Vladimir, thank you. Oh, yeah. I drive a lot, so for my brake work, I trust Canadian Tire. They do almost half. Two nothing for the wings over the stars after one period of play on goals by Brent Gilchrist and this man, Nicholas Lidstrom of the wings. He leads all defensemen in scoring in the playoffs. Tell us about the first period where your team struck quickly. 
Yeah, well, uh, I thought we came out a little slow. We wanted to have a better start, but after killing that uh, 5 one 3 off, I thought we, uh, we turned it up more and uh, we played a lot more aggressive too after that. Scotty talked about creating traffic in front of Belfour, and that's how your goal resulted. Yeah, I, I just tried to get the shot to us and that, and I think it hit their uh, defense and skate, and uh, I didn't even see the puck win. Shanahan uh, wasted his arm, so that's how I know the puck went in. Are you forcing the Stars uh, to play against your speed and perhaps open this up a little bit, Nicholas? Well, that's what we want to do. We want to use our uh, use our speed and try to get the puck ahead and, uh, and really use our speed. And I think we can do that even better than we did in the first period. Nicholas, thanks. Good luck in the second. Thank you. From the file, brought to you by Ford Motor Company of Canada Limited. Makers of the new 1998 Ford Escort sedan and a proud founding sponsor of the Hockey Hall of Fame. Tonight, Flyers goaltending magic revived. Here's the 98 Escort. It'll make you think. Five year deal worth $22 million, but because he's a restricted free agent, Chicago has the right to match any offer. And right now, the two teams just can't agree on a compensation package. It seems that the Blackhawks want a little bit too much in return for the 26-year-old center. Roenick won't sign an offer sheet with the Islanders or any other team because if he does, the Hawks can match and retain his rights. Roenick has had an ongoing feud with team management and definitely wants out of the Windy City. There have been absolutely no contract talks between Roenick and the Blackhawks. So with the Islanders' deal stuck in neutral, we've received word that Montreal, Tampa Bay, and Washington may get involved in the bidding for Roenick. The New York Post is reporting that the Hads are offering Pierre Turgeon, the Lightning are offering Chris Gratton, and the Caps are offering a package that includes Joe Juno, Pat Peak, and Sylvain Cote. In other news to tell you about, the era of the rat at Miami Arena may be over, thank goodness. At their annual meeting, the NHL general managers agreed that home teams will be held responsible for the actions of their fans. Fans that throw debris onto the ice will be warned once by the PA announcer, and if they persist, a referee can then issue a delay of game penalty to the home team. Todd Harvey and Grant Marshall may sue the woman who has accused them of sexual assault. They were charged after an incident at a Winnipeg house party on the weekend. Harvey's agent Pat Morris told us on Tuesday that he has heard his client's story and he's notified the Dallas Stars that they have nothing to worry about. The province of Manitoba has a no-tolerance rule on sexual assault, meaning that charges are filed by police immediately when an assault is reported, regardless of what evidence is available and regardless of whether stories conflict. Miami Heat coach Pat Riley has had a few...